Ooh, that's a great question. I would say, ooh, uh, someone just said Six of Crows, definitely. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I did a silly thing. So I have been wanting to do this video for a very long time, but I forgot how evil, honestly, some of you guys are. So what today is, as you can probably tell by the title of this video, is I asked you to send in two different books or characters or tropes or anything like that, and I have to choose one. Um, what I didn't expect, which I should have known, is that you guys would literally go through all of my favorite books and pit them against each other. I haven't read them all. I screenshotted them all from Instagram. Thank you all so much. So you might see some um, unfiltered reactions here. <laughs> We're just gonna dive into it. I'm prepared for pain. This is my Christmas, my holiday, my end of the year gift to you, putting me through a lot of pain. So I have my tea. I'm drinking, what am I drinking? Organic peachy green. I'm gonna attempt to calm myself down and soothe my throat as I try. Very hard to get through these, so let's dive in. <laughs> Where do I even start? Okay, let's just start off with the hardest one because this one was so funny. So a lot of you horrible, horrible people that I love so much asked me Jem or Will or Will or Jem or Herondale or Carstairs. Um, thank you to Jar Jar Greens who said, Whoever said Jem or Will is pure chaotic evil and I will fight them because thank you, I need someone to fight them for me. Jem or Will, ah, uh, honestly, <clears throat> honestly Will because I was always the person who had crushes on like the class clowns in high school or in school in general rather than like the quiet kid. I don't know, I was always just very drawn to like really magnetic and, and very like boisterous personalities and I feel like Will is like that, whereas Jem is a lot more calm and caring and mature. <laughs> so I feel like um, if I was in that age range that um, the Infernal Devices series takes place in, yeah, I'd, I'd probably go for Will. But don't quote me on that, that might change by tomorrow. So today, Will Herndale, my man. Also shout out to the one person who said Will or Jem, sorry. At least you recognized what you were doing. This one was hard. A Little Princess or The Secret Garden. Ooh, um, for a book, The Secret Garden, for a film, A Little Princess, that film, I still dream about it. Like what a beautiful, beautiful film. If you haven't seen it yet, um, A Little Princess. Okay, a lot of you guys ask this and I actually feel really bad. I got so many people asking me, Harry Potter or Percy Jackson? And I actually never read Percy Jackson. What are, what are his, what's his series? I never read those. And I know that's ridiculous because I know I would have loved them. I don't know why as a child, I missed that. I literally just completely missed the Percy Jackson train. And I apologize profusely. Aggie Brown 00, chaotic evil, personified. I'm so sorry, I'm sure you're very nice. Asked Nikolai or Howl, how dare you? I would pick Nikolai because I am married to someone who is so much like Howl. <laughs> so yeah, I think Nikolai would be fun. Um, I'd like to try that out. <laughs> Ooh, Wind Up Bird Chronicle or Norwegian Wood? I would say Wind Up Bird Chronicle, even though that took me so long to finish. I think I had to start it and restart it like a hundred times. Um, I much preferred Wind Up Bird Chronicle, but the film for Norwegian Wood is beautiful. Light reading or very deep reading? Ooh, very deep reading. If you mean by like focus wise, I can't do the like, oh, I've got 20 minutes. Let me just read a book. I, I've trained myself to do it sometimes, but I hate it. I would much prefer to have just like hours to just sit and read. So deep reading, I guess is my answer. Somebody else asked Kurt or Nikolai, which is the same as asking Howl or Nikolai. So I guess that means I picked Nikolai. <laughs> I would just really like Nikolai to be my best friend, honestly. So um, good thing Kurt doesn't watch my videos, but. <laughs> okay, I got this question a couple times. People ask the Cruel Prince versus Six of Crows. And I feel like people, because I recommended the Cruel Prince in one book, 
in one video people might think that I like the book I actually didn't um I loved the world but I hated the cruel prince like the actual prince um I didn't I did not enjoy him at all um so six of crows 110 percent but also I'm just not I didn't really get on the hype train for the cruel prince and then someone asked resand risand resand or mal I didn't, I never liked Mal, so resand. <laughs> so many of you guys, heartless, evil people that I still like. Um, so many of you ask, Howl's Moving Castle versus House on the Cerulean Sea. I feel like that's like the little sister and the bigger sister, you know, the child and the parent book. Um, I still would say Howl because Howl had like such a rich world and i think house on the cerulean sea felt very like a short little moment in time kind of like an igloo versus like a full snowy world howl still has my heart for that one but if you like howl you should read house on the cerulean sea and vice versa yes Ooh, somebody asked inkheart versus sorcery of thorns <gasps> i will have to say Ah, uh, I will have to say Sorcery of Thorns only because I haven't read Inkheart in so long, but Cornelia Funke is my girl. I love her to death. Um, so maybe I should just reread Inkheart. I don't know. Thank you for asking that. That inspired me. I will add that to my reading list. Ooh, this is a good one. Someone asked Night Circus or The Starless Sea. And both of those books, as you guys might know because I've said it many times, both of those books I could not understand. Like I kept reading it and I was like, what is going on, you know? But I would choose Night Circus because that's the only one that I actually finished. For A Starless Sea, I was so confused and I literally just lost the plot. I, d I don't know what happens in the end. Her, her books are so, so visual that for The Night Circus, even though it didn't, I didn't really get the plot. I didn't really like the plot that much. It was so beautiful in my brain. Like everything that I saw was like, wow, I love it. Um, but with Starless Sea, the visuals that my brain was cooking up, I didn't like it. I was like, why am I underground? <laughs> why is it so dark? Whatever the hell my brain was doing with the words she put on the page, I wasn't like comfy in the world. So um, I pieced out. So the night circus, for sure. Okay, this person I can't pronounce. Oh, Kiranbang. That is horrible. So this person's Instagram name is my favorite Korean street food. So <laughs> I feel extra betrayed by this question. You are asking me V.E. Schwab versus Lee Bardugo. <laughs> I almost don't want to answer this. Um, here's the thing. Oh, no, you know what? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm not gonna play your game. I'm actually not gonna answer this because they are both the lights of my freaking life. Um, A Darker Shade of Magic is one of my favorite series. I love it so much, but Six of Crows is the book that threw me back into this world. It's the reason I even have a booktube channel. Um, And they're both, they seem like genuinely really nice people. I follow them both on Instagram and they are so open and they, are so encouraging. Um, if you are looking to write, definitely follow them. They are just so, ugh, I love them both and I will not choose. Speaking of Lee Bardugo though, someone asked Six of Crows or Crooked Kingdom, which is the second book of Six of Crows. <sighs> I would honestly need to reread them <laughs> because they've kind of squashed together in my brain, but I remember loving how much more of the characters we got to learn about in Crooked Kingdom. But Six of Crows, actually Crooked Kingdom was the first book that my mom actually bought it for me as a gift, but it was the first book that like was purchased rather than me getting it from the library as far as like reading on my e-reader um, because I finished Six of Crows and I had a meltdown because it leaves you on a cliffhanger. It didn't occur to me that I could have just bought the book. I had to wait for like eight weeks for Crooked Kingdom to come in. So the joy I felt of being able to read Crooked Kingdom because it was bought for me as a present made the book even better. So I don't know. They kind of run together, but 
I'm leaning towards Crooked Kingdom. I think. Mm, I don't know. Someone just said Six of Crows, definitely. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Got a lot of Throne of Glass versus A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I think I've talked about this before, but I didn't really like A Throne of Glass because I just got confused by all of the love interests and then I just lost the plot because I was like, this is too much. And I know that some people are incredibly passionate about it, but I lost it. I, I started skimming and it was gone. So A Court of Thorns and Roses. Another thing that I haven't read, I got a few questions of The Hunger Games versus Divergent. I actually never read the Divergent series. That was like, again, I don't know why I didn't because I was very much like that era of the dystopian YA novels. I was into it. So I don't know why I missed Divergent, but I missed, I missed Divergent. Sorry. The Immature Yet Soft Wizard Edition. Howl or Nathaniel from Sorcery of Thorns? <sighs> Ooh, that's a great question. I was gonna say Nathaniel because you would also get the added bonus of his best friend Silas, but with Howl, you get Calcifer. Ooh, uh, I feel like Nathaniel had less temper tantrums than Howl. Like, I feel like, mm. I don't remember in the book how extensive Howell's home library was. So I would pick Nathaniel only because I know that his house has a bomb library that I would love to use. So Nathaniel. Duh. <laughs> Ooh, dang, this one. Shadow and Bone or A Song of Wraith and Ruin. That's hard. So, ooh. I would say, ooh, uh, I'm gonna pick A Song of Wraiths and Ruin because, and it's really tight, um, because for Shadow and Bone, I actually, other than, no, I didn't even really like her in that book. Yeah, I can't think of a single character in Shadow and Bone that I really loved, but I really loved some of the characters in A Song of Wraiths and Ruins. I'm basing it on character love, A Song of Wraiths and Ruin, because I could hang with some of those characters. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked Kaz or the Darkling? Why would you choose the Darkling? My friend Kayla did not ask this, but sounds like a Kayla question. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not on the Darkling's um, little fan caravan here, Kaz, all the way. Cut out all the eyeballs you want, buddy. Ooh, happy ending or rip out your heart sad ending. I like happy endings. I'm fragile i don't like sad endings it uh, mm, no happy happy endings please oh but this one's hard somebody asked the darkling or mal i feel nothing for mal there is not a piece of me that cares about Mal and I'm so sorry about that. At least for me, I I feel things for the Darkling, like there's empathy there. But with Mal, I'm just like, that's what I mean by me not loving the characters in Shadow and Bone. Dare I, dare I say the Darkling? I'm gonna choose the Darkling in this one, sorry Mal. <laughs> and then there's all these people asking me Kaz or Nikolai. Oh, I would pick Nikolai because I don't really deal very well with the, like, there are a lot of times where Kaz is just not nice to his love interest and I could not handle that. Like, I can't deal with people suddenly being, like, not nice to me, even if, if it's to protect me or whatever, um, no. So I feel like Nikolai would be very just nice, you know? I love Nikolai so much. God, I can't wait for the next book. <laughs> oh, this one's really interesting. Somebody asked Pachinko or Human Acts? Mm. I would say Pachinko because I feel like if you go into Pachinko with no knowledge of any of the historical context, it's still an incredibly powerful read. But with Human Acts, I think you could read it without the historical knowledge, but it wouldn't be quite as impactful. Um... I feel like Pachinko is just also an easier read because it reads like a typical novel, but I think that Human Acts, it could be a little bit harder to follow. And yeah, I think that you need to have a little bit more background knowledge in the history before you read it. So 
I would say Pachinko. And I heard that they're making either a drama or a movie version of it. And I really hope that they do it well. I'm excited for it, but I really hope that they do it justice. So we shall see. Ooh, somebody asked historical fiction or YA fantasy. I am currently deep, deep <laughs> within the like trench of YA fantasy and I like it here, but the genre easily gets very repetitive. So I would say if I could only read one genre for the rest of my life, I would have to pick historical fiction. But if they wanted to throw in a little magic in there, you know, like th those kind of historical fictions, love it. I would not complain. But yeah, I would say historical fiction has the ability to be much more varied and you learn a lot, but YA fantasy gets quite repetitive, even though I love it. No hate, love. <laughs> and then we have the most evil question. How is Moving Castle or Six of Crows? Parentheses, I'm not evil. Here's the, th okay. <laughs> For Howl's Moving Castle, I can read it and reread it and reread it and reread it and never get tired of it. But I actually haven't, I've, I've read the duology, the Six of Crows duology twice, and I haven't touched it in a while because I fear that it would lose its magic if I keep reading it, you know? It's kind of like when you have a favorite song and you don't listen to it because you don't want it to hit you less. But for the year of 2020, I'll say Six of Crows because Six of Crows like defined this year for me. And it is the reason I am even right here talking to you guys. So for only for the year of 2020, Six of Crows beats Howl's Moving Castle. Can't believe you made me choose. Oh, this one's pretty interesting. Wait, where'd it go? I just saw it and I've scrolled past it. Well, whatever. Somebody asked me Twilight versus the host. And that's actually so interesting because I don't remember I think I only read The Host once and I don't remember it very well, but I do remember thinking that at the time when I read it. You are not gonna park there. Okay, I don't remember the plot of The Host that well, but when I read it, I remember thinking that it was such an interesting concept where you were like kind of on the side of both the characters. Like there's a conflict and you can so easily see each of their points of view and you don't know who to root for. I could be making this plot up in my brain, but um, I remember thinking that that was so interesting and versus Twilight was kind of like a love story with vampires. So it wasn't like groundbreaking to me, but I will say that I just choose Twilight because I read that series so much. Um, I would just, that was another one that I can just reread and it doesn't, have any stronger or less strong effect on me. So I will choose Twilight, but I I wish I remembered the host more. I never saw the film. I Isn't Saoirse Ronan in it? I found that out recently and I was my mind was blown. If she's not, then I'm crazy. But if she is, that's very strange. And I still don't plan on watching it, but strange. <laughs> and last but not least, you guys thought you were gonna trick me. You thought this was gonna be a hard question. Six of Crows or A Court of Thorns and Roses. How dare you, Six of Crows. I don't even have to hesitate. Six of Crows is the one that I'm gonna choose. That is all. And I know that I mentioned it in my, oh, that was on my main channel. Well, I mentioned it in my video on my main channel that I'm super excited for the Netflix version. Um, like I said, didn't love the characters in Shadow and Bone, but I'm excited to see it translated on film. I know that Lee Bardugo has been really involved in it. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, fingers crossed. The cast from the like three second videos you see of them on Instagram, they seem great. I can already feel the chemistry, even though they're never in the same room in these Instagram things. I've said it before, but the guy who's playing Kaz is Kaz in my brain. Um, the guy who plays Jesper, I can feel it. The charisma is there. The girl who plays Inej is like shockingly beautiful, shockingly beautiful. I think the girl who plays Alina might make me actually like Alina, who knows? So um, yeah, I'm really excited for that as well. And yeah, I think this is where I'm gonna end it. I hope that you guys are having a really good Christmas if you celebrate, just general holiday, end of the year season. I don't know what else to say, but thank you for spending some time with me. Thank you for sending in your 
very difficult questions. Oh wait, somebody asked on Pride and Prejudice or Little Women. Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, I would say Pride and Prejudice. That was like one of the first classic books that I ever read, I think. Um, I remember reading Little Women. I read the, the like kid version. If you ever, do you remember those? I don't know if it was just me that read them, but they were these hardback books that were big type. And I remember I read Little Women and Robinson Crusoe, like all of these classics that were kind of chomped down into a lower reading level. Uh, so I don't, I actually haven't read the full text of Little Women. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. So um, yeah, I, I remember being very ironically proud of myself um, when I finished Pride and Prejudice because that was my first like classic work of literature that I finished as a, you know, preteen or whenever I read it. So I would choose Pride and Prejudice, but it is a mm, close tie. So anyway, I'm done. I will leave you here. Please be safe. Please finish this year on a strong and happy note. I'm wishing you very well and I will so I think I still have another video to post before I wish you a happy new year, but just in case, happy, happy new year. I will see you in 2021. Bye.